Ah, you're probably things are looking good here, mate. Just a quick sort of overview for you. Looking down the line. Hands move nicely up the shaft plane. Or hand plane. Then get onto the elbow plane. Could be getting a little bit higher there, but pretty good. You can see the hands hitting you right through the base of the right bicep. Top of the backswing position, massively improved since we last got together. Much more disciplined, not losing the pressure here now on the right elbow. You used to get a little bit too long at that point, the right elbow would start to drift up. And you can see that's disciplined nicely. Good leg action, right leg straightening, left knee flexing out. I would say the only criticism there is I'd like to see you keep that right arm just a touch straighter for a little bit longer. But all in all, good position at the top of the backswing if you just run Charlie Wee through to the top. You see the same sort of thing. You can see he keeps his right arm straighter to just a little bit longer. Swings the club up the hand plane. Starts moving it onto the elbow plane at the top. So he's just a little bit more on plane than yourself. Keeping that right arm straight may help you achieve that. Then from the top of his backswing, returns to forward flexion, getting the club nicely in line with his hands. And this is something that we worked hard on last time. You can see now that that left shoulder, or that right shoulder, should I say, gets much more on plane, creeps underneath less. You can see there's a result, the shaft drops less behind you. It's now a little bit underneath plane, but not dramatically. And that's largely due to a lack of lag from the top of the backswing, P4 to P5 and P6. So you just lose your angles a little bit, as we know, through that area. Hence, that position a little bit underneath plane at that point. Because of that, the tendency then is to just get the arms separating from the body just a touch there as you come to impact, rather than what we see with Charlie here coming through, keeping the arms much more in sync, orbiting the body on that elbow plane again. We can see as your swing comes through, the arms have come away from the body a little bit, and as a result, the hands exit just a little bit higher than the plane on which they went back. But all in all, Colin, a massively improved movement on last time we got together. The key area that I'd like to work with you on via this footage is from the top, we can see there's still just a touch of a move back. You see your head drifting back from that line. Just a fraction. And we can see there that we lose the angles in the wrists a little bit too early. What I will do, I've got some nice footage of Mike Bennett over the weekend teaching a guy to improve this move here. So to increase his lag. And he demonstrates and explains the drill quite well. If I get a chance this evening, I'll email that footage across to you and let you watch Mike explain how to do that. So maybe, you know, one of the things we definitely need to work on that when we get together on the 11th. So we don't need to sort of bore you too much with that. But you can see with Grant White, the tendency is to move down and forward. Down and forward from P4 to P6. Or as you move forward, you don't really get that left knee working down quite as much as you could. It's a little bit more downward movement there. You can see there's more sort of downward pressure here. Left knee moving out from the left ankle. And then from there, now this is the big thing that you need to work on. You need to spend some time hitting shots with a cut-off finish. If I just run you through now, you're moving forward nicely. And then now everything stops. You rotate, and then on the way through, you can see that body turning. If we look at the difference with Grant Weight, you can see your belt buckle is not really raised much there through impact. As Grant Weight extends, tucks the butt, you can see the belt buckle raising. So what I'll be working hard on here, Cole, between now and when we get together next, is the move that you're going to make from here to here. You want to really feel that you tuck that butt underneath you and use the ground to push up. We can see that as he does that, I'm just going to get rid of a few of these lines. He's much more angled back here. So his upper torso has extended 
if we look at yourself, you're moving the hips forward. You're trying to extend at that point. The hip slide is giving you the tilt that you're seeing here. But then as we go through, there's a lack of extension. And as a result, we haven't got get rid of those lines. This angle here. So we need to extend more, we need to stand up more through in the finish. And I'd be working on trying to achieve that look in your follow through as opposed to that look in your follow through. Two things have happened. Belts raised due to an extension in the lower body and the thoracic area, the upper back has extended rather than stayed in flexion. So a few things that you can work on there, Carl, all in all looking pretty good and we can work on that a lot more when we get together on the 11th. Good work, keep it up and good luck this week.